On today's show, LeBron James is frustrated with the Cavs roster, Dion Waiters is now the king of Miami, and Russell Westbrook nearly killed a man. Live from Fan Night in Toronto, Trey joins us with some goodies from Raptors Shoot Around. And the Wizards plan on wearing all black to their game versus the Celtics tonight. Pretty cool or pretty weird? It's Tuesday, January 24th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters. Whether you're listening to the podcast or joining us live right now on NBA TV or later on YouTube, we're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. Let's NBA. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend, Lily. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least, joining us live from Toronto, it's your honorary Canadian, Trey Kirby. TK. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Trey. We're going to be discussing the best-selling jerseys on tonight's show. We know you love your merch. Has anything caught your eye up there in the six? Well, as usual, I went down to the team store, and I got to say, the Raptors have some really great stuff. I saw some cool long tees, some cool flannels. There was a $200 suede Drake hat. Whoa. But the favorite thing I saw was this black and gold Raptors ball claw Ooh. logo blazer. <laughs> Lee, this is pretty swaggy. If you want me to pick you one up for All Star, I can do it. It's only 140 bucks. Very affordable for a black and gold blazer. Hey, if you bring it back, I will definitely wear that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that idea. In fact, Trey, we're gonna talk to you later in the show, but maybe go swing by Real Sports there, pick that up for Lee in advance, and then, and then we'll maybe see it on you later. I don't know. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'll go grab a jacket. Okay, good stuff. All right, look. So Trey, obviously in Toronto for tonight's NBA TV fan night game, it's the Spurs and the Raps. We'll get into that later. But we're running the three-man weave here. Remember the three-man weave? I do, yes. Great offense, wasn't it? (laughs) Uh, And why not play a little Are You In Sync with the three of us here? Just makes sense. Rules are simple. I'm going to hit Tass and Lee here with a question. We're going to count them down. They'll fire off their answers at the exact same time. If you guys are in sync, Swaggy P (laughs) will join us here. There he is. If you're not in sync, well, just maybe creates debate. All right, so first one. Monday night, not a good night for the number one seeds in both conferences. The Cavs, despite getting monster games from LeBron and Kyrie, lost to the Anthony Davis-less Pelicans by two, while the powerhouse Warriors, who were on a roll, they got upset by the new king of Miami, Deion Waiters, who hit a huge three late, 33 points, get the upset. So, I want to know, what was the more shocking loss from last night? Cavs or Warriors? Answers in three, two, one. One Cavs. The Warriors. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You can't stop Dion Waiters. <laughs> you really can't stop Dion Waiters. I, I think it's the Cavs. Did you see LeBron James after that game? Yes. I've never seen an angrier LeBron James. Mm-hmm. I think he may even regret a little bit how far he took his dialogue after the game because he kind of called out David Griffin in the front front office and said, listen, there's an open roster spot. Fill it with somebody who can play some minutes because he had to play 44 last night. And this is what he said. I just hope that we're not satisfied as an organization. We're not better than last year from a personnel standpoint. It's like when you don't have bodies, it's tough. The bleeping grind of the regular season, we're a top-heavy team. We have a top-heavy team. We top-heavy as bleep. It's me, Kyrie Love. It's top-heavy. That via ESPN. I think it's top-heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite top-heavy. I, I was just shocked by that because LeBron never really loses his cool. Mm. Ever, right? Yeah, that, that was shocking. You're right. Uh, you, maybe he's right. Like, maybe regretted it a little bit too because he was already running it Reeling back. It back he was already it, yeah. running yeah. it back today on Twitter where he's like, you know, here it is. Uh, he says, I'm not mad or upset at management because Griff and staff have done a great job. I just feel we still need to improve in order to repeat. There was more though. There's some dot, dot, dot there if that's what we want to mm. do. Mm. And then some people think that's a subtweet because <laughs> it's a second tweet. And what's he saying there? Like, hey. uh, yeah, the rule here, a- of course, is never tweet, even when you're apologizing. Okay. It, was, it was an incredible upset, but I think the Cavs have got to blame this themselves because they came out sluggish last night. They didn't look good at the start, and they're not playing that well right now. They're in a bit of a slump. So oh, yeah. even though Anthony Davis wasn't there, I think the Cavs thought, we've got this easy win, and they went out, they were complacent, and it cost them in the end. Also, the Pelicans played probably their best game of the season. They were on fire from downtown. Sure. Everyone looked great. Uh, It was a very, very impressive performance from the Pelicans. But I'm going with the Golden State Warriors. You thought that was more shocking? It it was because of the way the Warriors have been playing right now. Remember yesterday on the show, this last five-game stretch they've been on has been the best of the season. They've been uh, blowing teams out by an average of 22 points. But they couldn't stop Dion, as you Mm -hmm. said last night. Dion Waiters was fantastic. Really, really good player. 
he was in control. He took good, smart shots. And at the end of the game, when the game was on the line, he hit a huge game winner. So that, to me, surprised me because I always felt that the Warriors were just going to get things together and, and pull away and go for the win. It looked like they were going to do it. But Dion and the Heat held firm. Yeah, the answer might be in sort of the uh, response from both teams after the game in terms of which one was more shocking. And Tassie already went through it. LeBron was really upset with the way his team's playing in that loss. Whereas Durant basically laughed this one off. Yeah. Saying, if I'm sort of going to lose to anyone and a game winner, eh, make yeah. it Dion Waiters. It was a great shot. He was rolling. That's that, that is, not to make an excuse for the Warriors, but it is that little tough back-to-back there in Florida. They maybe got the South Beach flu. It happens to mm-hmm. some guys in yeah. the NBA. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, last year they had it Miami, then Orlando. Right. Yeah. You'd rather right. have it that way. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, so it happens. But look, both surprising losses in a night filled with surprises in the association. Yeah, but this year the Warriors have lost to the Lakers. Yeah. They lost to the Lakers last yeah. year, a 17-win team. They lost to the Wolves last year. They're still on pace for 69.24 wins. Did some math. <laughs> They're still on pace for a good record. I think they'll be okay. All right, well, moving on. Some teams, they did fare better than the Cavs and Warriors last night. And boy, did they ever need the win, okay? In Indy, Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks held on to beat the Pacers 109-103, snapping a two-game losing streak, big. While in Milwaukee, the Young Bucks dropped 127 points on the Rockets. They snapped a five-game slide. So again, both big wins, but I want to know what was the more timely win Knicks or Bucks? Answers in three, two, one. Bucks. Okay. Yeah. Come on, Swaggy. We're in sync. <laughs> We're in <laughs> sync. Yeah. You think the Bucks was a more timely win than the Knicks? I'm actually a little shocked by this. Well, they'd, they'd been on a ho- horrible stretch, as you mentioned, lost five straight. And this was a game against a good opponent that they really had to prove if the Bucks are seriously going to make the playoffs and even make some noise. Some of us feel that they can even battle for a top four spot. That's not going to happen the way they've been playing recently. They needed a win like this, and they kind of beat the Rockets at their own game. You know Houston give you a lot of chance to score the ball. And when Houston, even though Houston shot the ball all right last night, they didn't score as easily and as freely as they do. And the Bucks were able to get out and transition, get a lot of easy buzz. Baskets, hit some three-pointers. Delhi was fantastic. Jabari was great, considering he had that little team discipline situation yeah. not long ago. Really good, solid performance from the Bucks. It was an incredible performance by Jabari Parker. After being benched, mm-hmm. going to the bench for his last game, he came out and had a great, great game. And, and, and to me, this is a little like Tim Duncan retired, had the retirement ceremony last month. Greg Popovich came out and said, I want to thank Tim Duncan for allowing me to coach him, for getting on him. And Jason Kidd... You know, he, he reprimanded Jabari Parker in that instance. A couple of years ago, he did the same thing with Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm-hmm. Giannis treated it perfectly, just like Tim Duncan did with Greg Popovich. He said, you know what, J- Jason Kidd probably has the best out for me. Mm-hmm. And that's why Jabari Parker has to fall in line with Giannis Antetokounmpo. He was also there 2015 when it happened. It was perfect. It was a perfect night for the Bucks. As far as the Knicks go, I mean, do they want to win? You know, do they actually want to win? Because they're just on a train of mediocrity mountain. I mean, what what do they want to do? They they can barely win now. Do they want to be what 500 come with a great uh, a great uh, possibility of making the playoffs come the trade deadline? So they keep D Rose, they keep Carmelo Anthony, and maybe lose D Rose see, in the offseason for nothing. It's almost like. Wouldn't you rather lose a few games and have to make a trade because they don't have a lot of prospects? Right I think it, I think the more timely win was the Knicks because they had a 17-point lead and they nearly blew it again with horrible passing, brutal shooting, no defense there, but they got it done in the end and Melo hit the big shot. Jeff Hornacek was quoted after the game as saying, "If we lose another one like that, and what he means by that is of course another close game." Mm. The guys probably would have quit and called it a year. <laughs> if the Knicks lose maybe last night, he's saying everyone just like, that's it, we're done. We can't win a close game. So I mean, that way, it was maybe, yeah. maybe more important, but both teams obviously needed the W. All right, final one here, guys. We had some spectacular misses in the NBA last night, starting with Joakim Noah, who shot one of the worst free throws you'll ever see. And even he knew it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And of the <laughs> different miss variety, Russell Westbrook, he nearly killed Defensive Player of the Year candidate Rudy Gobert was a dunk, but he doinked it, so both missed it. This is a tough one, I think, but what's the more enjoyable miss? Noah's free throw or Westbrook's dunk attempt? We're going to be in sync. Answers in three, two, one. Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah. Wow. 
I, could, I knew it. Really? I knew it. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to see that painful, painful free throw. Again. That's exactly right. That free throw you make, you cringes you inside because you're <laughs> like, oh, that was ugly. Westbrook's dunk was attempt was spectacular, even though he misses it. Rudy Gobert gets a block on the play. Let's be fair on that as yeah, well. Yeah, look, he but challenged him. That's the thing about Russell Westbrook is he looks at the guy who's the best rim protector in the league right now and just says, I'm just going to try to dunk on you. He didn't Ru get a piece though, did he? Well, according to the official box score, he did. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So sure doesn't look like it in the replay, no, right? no, but no. he was credited with that. So I knew what you mm -hmm. meant. You agree yeah. with that one? Yeah. Joe Keem, did he have the shortest peak in NBA history? It was really, <laughs> and I want to go back to it. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. In yeah. 2014, when he was a Defensive Player of the Year, it just seems like it's it, it would be so tough for him to find that again. You know, I thought coming into the season that we'd see a little bit more of it. Even his free throw for shooting, yeah, shooting has fallen off like crazy because yeah. he used to be a decent free throw shooter. It's wild. All right, when we return, Trey Kirby joins us live from Canada. Get us all <laughs> set for tonight's spurs Raps game on NBA TV. Don't Trey, go anywhere. Trey. Hey, don't did go change, anywhere, you hoser. Did he change the way he spells his name when he's up there? Welcome back to the show. It is fan night tonight. Spurs Raptors on NBA TV from Toronto. So naturally, we sent one of our non-Canadians north of the border. <laughs> Trey, what's going on in Toronto? Oh! Hey, oh! Can you please tell everyone that it's not that freezing in Toronto? Because all of our colleagues after All-Star Weekend think it's minus 60 there every single day. Well, it was actually nice and mild today, but still snow came down. So, you know, you're half right and half wrong, Tess. I guess <laughs> that's just how it goes. <laughs> Everybody gets a double-double. That's half and half, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's I, I, right. That is totally incorrect. Either way, great intro, great weather talk. Uh, Kyle Lowry is slumping the last three games, and he's got no DeMar DeRozan beside him tonight. What's going on with Kyle? Well, Kyle's in the midst of the best shooting season of his career, but like you said, he struggled lately. So earlier today at Shoot Around, I asked him how he gets back on track and how he became one of the better three-point shooters in the league in the first place. A little bit of a shooting slump lately. Uh, when that sort of thing happens, do you change up your routine or you just kind of ride it out knowing you're going to start hitting again eventually? No, I was just going out there and get some extra work in, going to the gym a little bit earlier, coming, going back in a little bit later and going hard. You know, you can't go, you know, two hours, but you can go, you know, 10, 15 minutes hard, get some shots up and just believe in your work. So at the end of the day, I know I'll be fine. Well, speaking of hard work, you're shooting more threes than ever this year, hitting them at a career high rate. How did your game evolve to this point? Was it like a conscious thing that you wanted to get more threes up or what? Uh, I, just wanted to, I just always wanted to continue to get better at my game. And uh, three-point shot was always something I think you could continue to grow with. Um, you know, I'm not going to be dunking on people anymore, you know, <laughs> back in my day. But uh, I think that's one of the, the aspects of the game that can continue to grow and you can continue to get better at. You know, if you get a guy that shoots 50% from three, you know, that makes him even more deadly. 50% for three. I love the confidence from Kyle Lowry. Now, moving to the Raptors head coach, you have a notoriously good relationship with Dwayne Casey. He always calls you by your first name, always calls you training, he always gives you a good answer. So what was the good answer he gave you today? Well, the Raptors' defense has been struggling with Patrick Patterson out of the lineup, but he's listed as probable tonight, and it sounds like Dwayne Casey is excited to have him back because 2Pat is a bit of a talker, unlike the rest of the millennials on this Raptors team. <laughs> communication level has not been there the way it should be. Uh, that's something that uh, uh, is, is, is hurting us defensively. My thing is say something. Scream right, left. You know, there's only two, one right or left. So we got to say something and communicate. And I tell them all the time, they get on the cell phones and, and talk all day or, or text. Texting may be the problem. <laughs> Dwayne Casey in touch with the youth. He's also in touch with the youth with a little sideways hat there. He had just, just off to the uh -huh. side. <laughs> just the touch. Now, you also got some great stuff from Raptor Shoot Around where the players were doing their best play by play broadcaster impressions. Yeah, you guys watch a lot of Raptors games, so you know their broadcaster, Matt Devlin, is famous for shouting out random Toronto suburbs anytime somebody makes a long three. And it's obviously worn off on the players because a few of the guys during Shoot Around were doing the same thing. A couple of the cities I remember them shouting out. Not cities necessarily, even provinces, Saskatchewan, Ajax, Barrie, Etobicoke, Alberta. I didn't hear a medicine hat or a none of it, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> the microphones just couldn't pick it up. Nonetheless, it was funny to hear. I guess this sort of thing's catching on. <laughs> that is great stuff. I always loved hearing that. Now, you'll be back here in studio tomorrow, but you'll be bringing some video back with you. Yeah, you know how I do, Tass. We've been talking a lot lately about who's better between DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. So I went straight to the source and asked Lowry who's better between him and DeMar in a whole bunch of key areas. And some of the answers 
I think they'll surprise you. Ooh. Ooh. Can't wait. Ooh. It's Terrence Ross, <laughs> perhaps. He's the best Raptor. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> Guess you'll have to tune in to find out tomorrow. That's a tease. All right, Trey, we'll see you tonight. Thanks. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one. All right, after the break, you ask the questions, we answer them. We're opening up the mailbox. Stay tuned. Back with the starters, opening up the mailbox. It's been a while. Mm. You guys are great, though. It's sending in your questions. Keep them coming. The starters at NBA.com or hit us up on Twitter, hashtag the starters. We got a couple here. First one from Charlie. He writes, so the Washington Wizards are planning to wear all black to tonight's home game against the Celtics. As you know, the last few games between the two have been a little chippy. So I guess this is the Wizards way of sending some sort of message. But what do you think about the all black everything? Pretty cool or pretty weird? <laughs> <laughs> Lee, I mean, you should really answer this one. The Wizards coming dressed to the game in all black. They're not wearing black uniforms, as some have sort of mistakenly pointed out. What do this you think? This is pretty weird. Pretty weird. No doubt about it. Yeah. Why? Because uh, if this affects the on-court product, and as far as they win the game, then great, do it all the time. But if they do this and then lose at home to one of their rivals, then what does it really count for? I don't, I don't, I don't quite, quite get what this message sends to the other team. You're dressing in black like, oh, we're, gonna, we're intimidating you or something? I, I have don't... no idea about the message, but I don't <laughs> care. I like it because it's just the start of a little bit of a rivalry. Yes! I will take anything. Any, it doesn't matter how silly or weird it is, if it's cool, if it's weird. It doesn't matter if, it's, if it means rivalry, if it, if it says that we're having a rivalry in the NBA, I'll take it. Yeah, because we've had flagrant fouls, technical fouls. Mm -hmm. Uh, last yeah, year we had a coach teams, chirping yeah. with a player. We've had uh, apparently extra security back in the locker room yeah. to sort of keep these teams apart. Now we got all black everything. Maybe they're playing Are You In it. Sync? They're getting really close with <laughs> yeah, their noses. Maybe, well, they were in sync then, weren't they? Maybe that's it. I, uh, this is unbelievable to have this type of animosity for a regular season game yeah. Yeah. in January between two teams who are not elite teams, good yeah. teams, but yeah. maybe not elite teams. It's quite strange, but I love I it. I love it, yeah. And the Eastern Conference, the Raps are the, the second seed holder, but there is a spot, you know, to be grabbed up yeah. there in the Eastern Conference below the Cleveland Cavaliers, and, and the Celtics are obviously up there, it and the Wizards like are the making Wizards their name. would have been there early in the season, nope. but they've certainly picked it up, especially at home. They've won 13 straight yeah. at home. It should be a good game. Again, Celtics-Wizards tonight. All right, moving on. Hey, guys, love the show. Apparently Spurs guard... Jonathan Simmons and Celtics rookie Jalen Brown have been invited to compete in the 2017 dunk contest. What do you think about those potential invites? And is there anyone else besides Levine, Eric Gordon, and Trey Kirby uh, <laughs> that the NBA should ask? Uh, this cue from hilariously named Mr. Springy. All right, Mr. Think? Springy. First, we're all praying that we get a Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon return. Right. First and foremost. If you're going against those guys, you got to be confident if you're the underdog. And I think Jonathan Simmons and Jalen Brown are confident. Jonathan, Jonathan Simmons, the way he started his NBA career was a walk-on as a D-leaguer, so he's got to be confident. And this guy wears short shorts. That's <laughs> confidence, baby. So, you know, I think they're two fairly good picks. Watching the possibilities of guys, all the, the prospects of guys, I think these two are definitely worthy, capable guys. Yeah, I, I, only, I only worry if they're they're um, in-game dunkers and maybe not dunk contest dunkers. I have no real idea or n yeah. no way to back yeah. that up, but I don't think anyone's going to beat Levine or Gordon anyway, so we're going to need at least two other people to go in this. Those guys are great, great mm -hmm. dunkers. But kudos to them if they eventually do go in. Yeah, there. I mean, you, you mentioned you've got to have the confidence. And the guy I'm going with is actually the same guy I've mentioned in our season preview shows, Jeremy Grant. Oh, you're sticking with it? Yeah, because we saw him not long ago throw down a vicious reverse in the game. Look at that. That's nice. And he's had some pretty nice dunks this season. This one earlier on as well, just throwing it down. Nice. Solid. I like he's got the ferocity. He's got the power. He's got the creativity. He's also got a bit of flair there as well. And I think you need all those things in a dunk contest. So uh, I would like to see him in it. For a little variety, I wouldn't mind Kay Felder, the Cavs' backup point guard. Wow. A little guy, little guy. <laughs> he's got hops. You go check go check his yeah. college tapes. He's thrown down some monster dunks. And you need a little variety. you got some, you mm. know, those Zach Levine, Aaron Gordon, fairly similar heights. To have a little guy is always fun. All right. Final question here. This one coming from Corey, who writes, the NBA released their top-selling jerseys of the season so far. We've got Curry, LeBron, and KD in the top three, obviously, but were there any surprises in the top 15? It's a good cue again from Corey. There's a look at the top 15 most popular NBA jerseys through nbastore.com. October through December are the sales, so yeah, 
I mean, a lot of obviously great players. Is there anyone that shocks you or that isn't there or is there? How low they are? What do you got? Steph Curry at number one isn't surprising, but no. the fact that he's leading in 43 states is surprising. He sells more jerseys in Boston, Massachusetts than any Celtics player. He sells more jerseys in Indiana than Paul George. He sells more jerseys in Pennsylvania than Joel Embiid. He sells more jerseys in Texas than Kawhi Leonard and James Harden. That's surprising to me. Only seven states he doesn't lead in. And that's your Illinois, Ohio, Oklahoma is one Ohio, of them, yeah. New York, Ohio. Yeah. That's, that's surprising to me that he'd be bigger than, you know, some basketball crazy towns like yeah. Boston and, and Texas Harden and Kawhi. Well, when I look at the list, I'm a little shocked that, like, James Harden is low as he is. Because James Harden right now is maybe the leading the MVP race. Yeah. Obviously a tight race, but he's got a unique game. He's a scorer. He's on a great team. He's yep. in a you know big market, obviously in Texas. He's at 12th. I just thought he would be higher than some of these guys. Yeah, but yeah he's I, probably uh, paying the price a little bit for last season, where he wasn't the most popular player, despite those incredible numbers that he put up. And now he's having that resurgence. So uh, yeah, I would think that will probably grow. Yeah, as the season continues. Yeah, it's possible. All right, guys, thanks so much for sending in the questions. Keep them coming. The starters at NBA.com. We got Tina there. Hey, Tina. Checking the email nonstop, <laughs> and she loves it. That's the best part. Mm. Oh, look at this one. This one's great. She doesn't use a mouse. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. No, she doesn't like the mouse. Uh, when we return, Lilies, very solid play. So don't go anywhere. You know what I really wanted was um, for the officers involved to be held accountable, and. You know, the whole process opened my eye to a lot of things about the judicial uh, system in America. And it's not necessarily something that I, you know, can have any impact on. So just pursuing the lawsuit, you know, I hope it's a, it's a tiny step towards hopefully, um, you know, achieving some bigger goals in the future of, 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 of changing a little bit of the way things are done. Watch a new episode of Beyond the Paint tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. All right, let's get to tonight's picks. Oh, boy. Ooh. Spurs and Raps. Mm. It's the fan night game here on NBA TV. All of us, that's a bit of a shock to me, yeah. taking the Spurs. Raptors obviously on a bit of a slide, and Spurs are the Spurs, so maybe it makes sense. Lee, where are we going for the very solid play, man? We're heading down to the Fortress, but it comes from the Clippers and an unlikely source, DeAndre Jordan, dropping dimes here. Look at this one from DJ. Mm. Beautiful with Ray Felton. You Ray love a backdoor oh, cut, I man. do, I do. It. And a big man up there, usually in the high post, just drops it off. Beautiful layup. That's what I call a very solid play. He is in that State Farm commercial, dropping dimes, dropping oh, yeah. dimes. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Uh, we had the uh, Starters Twitter show today on today's show. It's up, by the way. We revisit our all-star reserve picks. We talk Oscar nominations. And Tass shared some of his favorite tweets about Dion Waiter's game-winning three and pose. Relating directly to this photo, Siret So he tweeted this image. When you hit stop on the microwave <laughs> right before it hits zero. Matt Moore tweeted, when you flip that omelet without breaking it. Russ Banks tweeted, <laughs> Nick's offered Dion Waiters five years, 75 million. Oh, yeah, I like that one. And Greg Wissinger tweeted, when you tweet real good. <laughs> there it is. Dion. Huge shot from Dion. Nice. Chilling like that. Yeah. I love it. All right, that's it for us tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, folks. And remember, some people prefer dog watching, some prefer people watching. Brace tonight, people.